and welcome back. Recently, I released a video where I acquired a large collection of old marching drums from a school, and at the end of the video, I put out a call to ask for suggestions on projects I could do with some of these drums. I share my videos all over different forums and social media groups, and I received one cool suggestion on Facebook recommending I try using alcohol ink on a metal shell to create a unique custom finish. I'd actually seen this done before on some different drum forums and YouTube, and the concept seems pretty simple. It's more like an arts and crafts project instead of the typical restoration or rebuilding I do with drums. I was fairly certain I didn't want to try this out on my newly acquired Superphonic, but in addition to the recent haul of drums I picked up, I already have a large collection of cheaper orphan shells that I could dig through to try this out. So I went back to my storage room and dug out this cheap steel snare shell that I had and decided this would be the perfect drum to attempt this project. I removed the badge from the shell by using a plastic razor blade and cleared off any residue left on the shell. The shell had both the snare throw and butt plate, but I was almost sure I'd used up the rims and some of the lugs to fix up another drum or to use in a previous project. Over the summer, I went through and organized a lot of these parts I had, so I grabbed my trusty container of cheap lugs and searched through it to see if I could find six dual-sided snare lugs for this drum. I was able to find five that fit, so with just one short, I went over to drumfactorydirect.com to see if I could find a match to order. I'd originally hoped not to spend any money on this project, but once I found the matching lug with the same hole pattern, I figured it was worth the $4 plus shipping to get what I needed. Next, I went over to Amazon to find an alcohol ink kit. In one of the videos I watched, they used the brand Tim Holtz in a few different color schemes for their drums, so I figured it would be good enough for me. Also, this was one of the cheaper packs I could find at only $11. A few days later, I had a small package arrive from Drum Factory Direct, and I took it downstairs with the hope to find it to be the exact same size and specs as my other lugs. Once I opened it up, it appeared to be exactly the same as the others, but the true test came when I made sure it would fit the current holes on my shell, and luckily for me, it passed the test. After another day, my package from Amazon showed up with the alcohol ink kit, and I could begin to get started with this project. I first started out by taping up the bearing edges and holes across the shell to keep any ink from dripping into the interior of the shell. After that, I grabbed a trash can and a piece of scrap wood so that I could set up an area to work on this shell while keeping any ink from making a mess. I cleaned off the shell with some rubbing alcohol to make sure I had a clean surface, and after that I could get started with the ink. I started with the lightest of the three shades and just dripping a little bit at a time and then using a straw to blow the ink and spread it around the shell. I experimented with other ways to move the ink around, like a compressed air can and gravity, but it seemed to me like blowing air through a straw was the most successful. Once I had used up all of that first shade of green ink, I moved on to the two darker shades. My main goal was to get the entire surface of the shell covered in ink, and this proved to be trickier than I originally hoped. And in the end, I wasn't too happy with how dark this shell was turning out. Maybe it was the lack of patience as this process went on, or maybe I should have started with the darker shades and then moved on to the lighter. But in the end, I did get the entire shell covered with a somewhat cool blend of colors. Once I had finished with dyeing the drum, I took it upstairs to my garage to dry off completely. Later that day, after the shell had dried, I began the process of clear coating this drum and sprayed it with Minwax Clear Gloss Polyurethane. Over the next four to five hours, I applied two coats and left this shell to sit overnight. The next morning, I grabbed the shell and took it downstairs to begin reassembling. I started by removing all the tape, and once I had it all off, I began reattaching the lugs along with the throw-off and butt plate. Once these were all back on the shell, I felt like I could really start to see the finish pop more, offset by the lighter chrome hardware. Next, I went over to my storage room to find some hoops for this drum. I was only able to find two 14-inch six-lug rims, and unfortunately neither had slots for the snare wires. I thought I was going to have to cut slots in here myself, but then I remembered I had a snare rim with slots on my pancake snare project from a few years back. Since this drum already has internal snares, the snare slots aren't really that important to this drum, so I quickly swapped that out for one of the rims I had just grabbed and was now set with what I needed. I picked out some extra heads and grabbed my bin of tension rods so that I could find 12 to use on this drum. As I began the final assembly, I made sure to use white lithium grease on these threads to keep the lugs lubricated. I find this to be really important with all drums, but especially on these drums with these cheap stamped lugs. 
I took this drum into the studio to test it out, and although the work I did really doesn't affect the sound, I figured it'd still be fun to include a demo in this video. In the demo, I'm using a two mic setup with an SC Electronics V-Kick on the bass drum and a Shure KSM32 as an overhead. As you can hear, this drum certainly has its limitations. I don't think this drum is fooling anyone as a high-end custom snare, sonically or visually. But with that said, I think this drum has a cool vibe in a lo-fi way, and honestly, I much prefer this visual look over the boring standard chrome finish that was on this drum to begin with. I think this process of using alcohol inks is fun, and it's fairly forgiving seeing as though you could completely remove it after the fact. I think if I were given the chance to practice a few more times, I'd get better at the process and see better results in my work. Considering that I only spent about $20 total for all my parts and supplies, and spent less than a day working on it, I'd easily recommend this to somebody else looking for a fun project to do with the drum. I'm not sure I'll do something like this again, but I'm glad to have given it a shot. If you've tried something like this, I'd love to hear about it, so leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. Until next time, thanks.